Today I'd like to talk to you about Margaret and H.A. Ray, the creators of Curious George. The first thing I'd like to show you is where Curious George first appeared. He first appeared in a book titled Rafi et les Neuf Singes, meaning Cecily G and the Nine Monkeys. Cecily G is this giraffe and you see the little nine monkeys right here on the sides of Cecily G. And then you see one little monkey who seems to be getting into trouble by playing the strings on the giraffe's neck. Well, that little monkey is George. George sort of took H.A. Ray's imagination and became his primary character. And he has become world-renowned, of course. Another thing I'd like to show you in the collection, that's in the collection, is just how H.A. Ray would experiment. We have here several little illustrations that he did for the book, Curious George Learns the Alphabet. Uh, you can see even notebook holes on the side because he was just sketching this on new notebook paper. And right here, he had actually written the text in his own hand. And of course, here's George, and here's his friend, the man with the yellow hat. And also, here we have uh, the man with the yellow hat is teaching George the alphabet. And H.A. decided he wanted to see what it would look like with the actual text. So either H.A. or Margaret typed out this text and he cutted it and pasted it and uh, put it into the picture itself. The other thing I'd like to show you Color separations were used extensively for full, full color illustration books. It still is used in the process. Most of it now is digitized and it's done by computer. But here, H.A. is communicating with the printer by showing on this acetate what colors he wants these particular balloons to be, and the balloon man, and the girl's dress, and the little boy's suit. You can see right here on this acetate, it just looks like it's in black, red, uh, just slight shades of gray, but what he was doing was telling the printer that he wanted this balloon to be yellow, this one to be red, and it's all a code that they were speaking, almost like a foreign language or a secret code. Um, and you see, of course, George up at the top being a little mischievous, as George is often. I want to tell you, too, about H.A. Ray. H.A. Ray did not attend art school. He um, was not from a very wealthy family. He, was, uh, he grew up in Germany, as did Margaret Ray. Um, and he always felt a little insecure about the fact that he didn't attend art school, proper art school. However, he would go to the zoo in Hamburg, Germany, and he would look at the animals and sketch the animals. In the collection, we have a photograph of H.A. standing in a zoo drawing the exotic uh, animals like giraffes and monkeys and elephants and the things that he loved to draw. As a matter of fact, he would draw, when he was in World War I, he actually fought in World War I, but he didn't like war and he would sit out in the field and sketch at night and he would study the stars and he became a just a rabid lover of stars and wrote books about stars, created a planetarium, which we also have in the collection. Margaret, however, did go to art school. She went to the Bauhaus in Germany, which was an avant-garde art school, something that she was very proud of, that she had attended the uh, Bauhaus, had studied photography before it was really um, an art form. It was still new and she was there in the 20s, so photography was not just an everyday thing yet, but um, she also did regular art um, 
And this is a sample of a linoleum block print that she did while she was at the Bauhaus. Um, I think probably Margaret was very gifted uh, in art. She did pottery. Her pottery is extraordinary. However, um, her talent was in developing the text of the books, coming up with the ideas, the humor, and she and H.A. Ray uh, had fun. They had fun and entertained themselves with these Curious George books. One thing I wanted to show you too that we have hanging in the exhibit room is, and this is just a small example of the whimsy that was a part of H.A. Ray. Here we have a giraffe, but there's something odd about his jacket. And here we have a zebra, and there's something odd about his jacket. You can tell that H.A. dressed them in each other's clothes. Uh, often when I'm showing this particular picture and I have adults and children in the audience, children automatically know that the two animals have switched coats. Adults have to look a little deeper and a little longer to be able to figure it out. The Ray story is one that is remarkable and the fact that their papers are here at the DeGrumman Collection is doubly remarkable. They escaped the Holocaust. Uh, they were in Paris for four years and the Nazi occupation was just right on their tails and H.A. procured pieces and parts of bicycles and created two bicycles, one for Margaret, one for H.A., and they rode their bicycles out of Paris because it was the only way out. And on their backs were the manuscripts and the original illustrations for Curious George. So they actually took their manuscripts on their backs out of Paris, went to Portugal, from Portugal to Brazil, from Brazil to New York, where they lived. Then they moved to Boston and lived there pretty much for the rest of their lives, although they had a summer home in New Hampshire. And then those original materials came to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, at the DeGrumman Children's Literature Collection. I invite you to come by and see what else is available to you at the DeGrumman Collection.